Hello, world. Welcome back to Golf Subpar with Colt Nost and Drew Stoltz. Sleaze, the Hero World Challenge is in the books. Tiger Woods made his comeback, but Scotty Scheffler stole the show, winning by three in an incredible performance. But the main event, the member yes, member, yes, yes, which yes, of course. we got these beautiful glasses of Sincoro Tequila in front of us. Cheers to you. Here's to you. Good we to be back at it. Played golf with you on Saturday. Sipped a few of these on as we were putting on a stripe show out there at Whisper Rock. What else are you going to drink, dude? Had to have it. Tweets were a-flowing like the salmon of Capistrano. And I'm happy to be sitting across from you drinking my favorite podcasting cocktail, the Sincoro Club. It's easy to drink here on the course or in the clubhouse. The cocktail features Sincoro's Reposado Tequila, which is aged in Tennessee whiskey barrels for eight to ten months. Sincoro is the greatest tasting tequila because it's rich and delicious and has a long, luxurious finish, kind of like your golf swing. Without question. Learn more about this delicious cocktail and tequila at Sincoro.com. Follow them on Instagram at Sincoro and go to your local spirit distributor to buy a bottle today. Man, it's delicious. It's good. It's smooth. It was a hell of a time out there. Like we said, we had it going for the member member. Uh, hell of a time, by the way. We had kind of rode all the rides, I would say. We had a nice little between the sheets game. Uh, the Woo. night after the first day, which was a big night, uh, rolled in the second day. You and I got paired together. I'll say this right here off the jump. You know, we made that bet last year. And around Tahoe, we always talk about it because we go up there. Charles Barkley's like, where is he going to finish in the field? So I, we played together the first day, paired together. We're playing an eight sums out there. So everyone's kind of feeling each other out, you know, game. Like people get nervous and things like that. I got to say this, Charles, whatever, if it's even close to the top 70 for next year, firing on Chuck. The guy's feeling himself and it's Dude, there's like real, there's real, there's some, there's some others, but there's a lot of good going on in the, well, in the man's game right now. We will discuss that when Tahoe Telling gets you. near because Rem remember that every I said year, that. him and his boys, they all bet on him to finish it above whatever number it is, and he never does it. He is feeling very, very confident. Um, it was great to see him up there. He was the, him and Dan Marley were the defending champions. They did not do it. We got to give a congratulations to West Strang and our man Hollywood for getting the job done. They're your champions at this year's member member, but we got lucky with the weather. wasn't too cold. The golf course was fantastic, and that's just one of the most fun events of the year. It's one of the most fun. It's a good thing it is only one time a year. I don't know much more I can handle of that, but it's good to have all the boys out there. Golf course is good. Weather was perfect. Uh, get you that little little itch again, you know, get out there and start slapping it around a bit. I hit balls the day before, Colt, as a little cram sesh before the final exam. Got an enormous blister on my hand, so it set me back a little bit. That's the last time I'll be hitting balls for a long time. I'm gonna stick with the playing only routine. But maybe you should uh, change your grip. Yeah, I don't think so. It's too late. Can't teach an old dog new tricks. I'm just gonna stick with what I got. But uh, yeah, nice playing with you the second day. We enjoyed ourselves immensely. It was a great time out there, and you looked fantastic mm -hmm. in your RLX gear out there as you always do. Of course, dude. The RLX golf collection draws inspiration from the traditional aesthetic of polo, updating it to create a modern sensibility focused on performance-driven design. From sophisticated styles to the most technologically advanced fabrics available, RLX Golf is the ultimate in functional luxury and provides pieces that are ready for whatever the conditions bring on the course or off. Be sure to explore RLX Ralph Lauren on ralphlauren.com when shopping for friends and family. RLX layers and luxury athletic pieces make the perfect present this holiday season and beyond. Take care of your people. Get them something nice. I mean... What's better? What else would you get them than the gift of polo? Yeah, without question. All right, go pick it up. The holiday season is coming. All right, also, you go to fairwayjockey.com, pick up some merch. Got some great deals going on there as well. And check out our YouTube page. If you missed the OGO caddy video, go watch it right now. It is 18 minutes of laughs and basically shows that Sleaze and I are the best caddies in the world. I've been fielding, I don't know about you, dude, been fielding a lot of phone calls from some notable names that I cannot mention. We're yeah, still in negotiations. I had to but sign some NDAs. They saw, they saw our performance and said, I could use I could use some shit like that. Yeah. Hard to blame them, dude. All Look right. what we did with those guys. Well, we got a lot to talk about. Let's start with the Hero World Challenge. Scotty Scheffler wins by three. You know, he's about three months in to his work with Phil Kenyon on the putting. Or Paul Kenyon, as some people like to call him on social media. Depends where you're but from. But Phil and Scotty obviously have done some great work. Scotty was positive in strokes game putting this week. Ended up being sixth out of 20 guys in putting. So basically, just say this. If it's a full field event and he finishes in the top four, top quarter as far as strokes game putting, he's going to be a problem because nobody hits it better than him. And he went, went on and pretty much cruised to victory with a three shot lead. Yeah, it was pretty like it was never really in doubt once he got going. Like that field is so spread out. There's only 20 guys. Got it. Uh, you know, maybe not everybody's in their best form, but you hit the nail on the head, dude. Like, if Scotty just puts okay, not even good, doesn't have to putt good. The way he hits it, assuming he has anything close to the full swing form, tee to green, next year that he has this year, 
it, it sounds easy to say, just don't put horrible. Like he's putting a lot of work in it. I don't think it's a long term thing for Scott. I think there's some mental stuff going on. He's going to get it tightened up with Kenyon, but. I mean, it's just not going anywhere. When you hit it that good, tee to green, like he doesn't have to be great. And this week he was good. And it was, you know, I want to say, I want to say easy victory. There are no easy victories, but it was never really in doubt against, you know, 19 of the other best players in the world. Yeah, and the man everybody wanted to see, Tiger Woods making his comeback, went out there, shot yeah. even par for four days, finished 18th out of 20 guys. I thought, the swing, I thought the swing looked good. Um, I didn't get to see a ton of it. I watched um, a lot of the Sunday round. I thought the swing looked good. He hit the longest drive of the entire field on, on the first hole Thursday, just striped it right down the middle. He got off to really nice starts. Like he was under par, it seemed like in every single round and then kind of struggled on the back nine. I don't know if that's fatigue, not playing. Obviously he hasn't probably been playing four days in a row and walking very much at home. But the one thing that I kind of noticed was the back nine always seemed to be a struggle. That first day he was under bar and I think he finished like bogey, bogey, double par or something like that. Yeah. First day. But yeah, I mean, I think there was a lot of good, First of all, it's just the fact that he's playing is fantastic. Yeah. But man, the swing looks good. I would love to hear like how much pain he was in at the end of the week, or like what this next week will be like as far as recovery. If he's, if it's not bad, then I'm looking. I got a lot of positive thoughts for 2024 for Tiger Woods. Feeling more hopeful about what he said before, which is like best case scenario. I think I could play once a month. Like it's hard to believe that when we haven't seen him for so long. But like. The golf this week, his scores, throw him out. I wasn't, I mean, sure, you're curious is what Tiger's going to shoot. What's he going to look like? But, like, that was kind of back burner for me. It was more, what's he look like walking around? Is he using well, the club? He looks jacked. If he's, he, the upper body's not been neglected, bud. God. The legs might have been uh, struggling a little bit. Upper body, just fine. He found some time to get some curls in during the downtime. But I was more concerned with, like, what's he look like on 16, 17, 18 just walking? Is he using the club as, like, kind of a, a crutch? for him out there. I thought physically he looked really good. If you want to take positives out of the, his actual golf game, I thought the driver was awesome. Uh, he drove it really well. Granted, those are big fairways. Mm -hmm. The stats are going to look really good. It's not everything, but there was enough speed. I think I saw him like of the shots that I saw, the drives I saw, he was over 170 like every time I saw it. That's plenty to get oh, around. Yeah. And he looks like he's driving it straighter. I didn't see many of like the big misses. It's just rust. Like it was curious too hearing his or hearing his comments after the tournament. He said, you know, each day I felt like it, I got into the round quicker than I did the day before. It's like the first day I never really felt comfortable for a while. Then the second day was a little sooner. Third day, a little sooner. Fourth day is like from the jump, I felt pretty good. And to your point, it's like we started most of the days pretty well, you it's know, four under and then kind of, yeah. and then kind of, you know, came to a halt on the back nine. So, but for him to say that, just getting out there playing four days, we'll get to see him again at the PNC. That'll be fun. There's not a whole lot to take out of that. I don't think other than Tiger Woods is playing golf, but all in all, Tiger's performance, I thought it was a huge plus for seeing him in the future going forward. Yeah, on Thursday, you know, they finished the round. Him and JT hugged it out, and Tiger had Rob McNamara, his his guy on on the bag for him this week. And JT said, "Who needs you, the mic?" Picked it up. He said, "Who needs an ice bath more, you or Rob?" And Tiger goes, "Oh, me." So obviously, was hurting a little bit at the end of the round, but it'll be interesting to see. I mean, we've got basically five months until the Masters, four and a half months, so a lot of time. I'm excited. The good news is him hearing saying the ankle doesn't hurt because it's fused now. It doesn't really move either. But if he can walk, he can still hit all the shots he needs to contend and possibly win an, another tournament or a major championship. Yeah, he's feeling himself a little bit. You saw what he walked in on Sunday wearing, wow. didn't you? Yeah, I don't I do like, that. No, I was like, that didn't come out. I don't come out unless you're feeling good about yourself. And you just come off an extreme upper body workout. But, dude, like I said, big picture, awesome. I don't care where he finishes in the field. I th I said going in, if he can just beat a couple guys, like that'd be impressive. These guys have been playing all he year. They're son. the best in the world. He beat Dub, which will be discussed. <laughs> but also I was thinking about sending him a text like, good week or whatever. But then I was like, what am I going to say? You lost to Tiger? Yeah. Oh, you lost to the fucking greatest player to ever play the game, arguably? Like, it's not the biggest insult ever. And after the year he's had, I was like, maybe I'll just kind of mm -hmm. ease into that one. So, um, yeah, he beat, he beat Dub. He played some, He shot even par. He hasn't played golf in forever. I mean, that was that was all good. Um, I want to say congratulations to Joaquin Neiman, who won the Australian Open. Um, started knocking on the door the last couple of weeks, but it's a guy we really haven't heard a whole lot from since he went over to live, but cool to see him get that win. Your guy, Min Woo Lee, I know. almost did it again. Missed a playoff by two shots, but two great weeks for them. He's coming, man. Look out, Min Woo is going to be a star in this game. He's going to be a huge star. I think you, we'll get a good sprinkle of him this year. He's not in the signature events, but he's in everything else on the PJ Tour. And then going into that President's Cup in Montreal, I'm pretty positive he's going to be on that team. I look for a tom kim like kind of popularity explosion out of him because he's tough to not love and the golf it ain't just like oh he's a cool guy he's funny the golf game is 
completely legit across the board. Well, there's some other news. The the rumors keep coming. Um, social yep. media is now saying the deal for John Rom heading to live is a is a done deal. Yeah, that he's signed through 2029, and it's supposed to come out. You know, possibly this week. I don't know. Like I said, I, I put it out there on Twitter. I'm like, can we just stop and wait to hear from John Rom or someone that's actually on his team? Is that all this speculation? You might be right. You might have got it right. I don't know. But until we hear from the man himself. I don't, I'm just going to say John Rahm is currently a member of the PGA Tour. There's so much noise out there. on so, And we've heard these kind of tweets before they come out. So-and-so is going. It'll be announced in the next few days. And then what happens? It doesn't. And then that goes away. And then it's the next name that comes along. I'm not saying John's going. I'm not saying he is. He could very well be going. Um, but until I hear it from the horse's mouth, from John, until he tweets or gives an interview or something, um, it's hard to even know. I'll say this. If it is true, it would be a, a little bit of a surprise to me. Although I think John's been... Probably, in my opinion, the most level-headed guy throughout this in terms of when speaking on Liv, speaking on the PGA Tour, he was very adamant about, I think, Sergio, I think these guys, you know, that from previous Ryder Cups should be involved in this. This is not the DP World Tour versus the PGA Tour. It's Europe versus America. I feel like he's been pretty fair in his critique and honestly in just all things that he talks about in golf. I think he like fair, well-thought-out arguments. Um, that being said, if you were to rewind six months ago, there's, you know, he's spoken on this I'd, if you would have told me hey by the end of the year it sounds like john's gonna go up and like you're crazy uh, but, listen, but you don't know we're not we're not gonna hide it i mean if he goes that's a massive loss to one, the of, the Tour, one of the biggest one of the biggest names and probably opens the door for other big names to go a lot of people are saying there's gonna be a big shake up in the next few weeks we're just gonna sit back and wait and see i'm not gonna guess on who it is or what all is gonna go on but it's crazy times right now man it's gonna be very very sad if we have basically two tours just completely divided with the best players in the world. And we only see the best players in the world four times a year. And I would be willing to bet if John Rahm does go, if this is true, what's what's coming out, he ain't gonna be the only one. I don't think it's like, we're going to get one guy. I think more will follow not, uh, clearly not to the same status of a John Rahm. There aren't very many of those, but I think more will follow on a, on a positive side. I would say John, like I said, he's very well thought out. He doesn't just make rash decisions. If this is true and he does go, it would lead me to personally believe, speculate all you want, could be completely wrong, that a merger or some sort of agreement is going to happen between the BJ Tour, PIF, all that, because I, based on all the things he said before, I don't think he would just throw it out the window. So is it potentially a chance to I'll get paid a ton of money and I can kind of still have an avenue open to, to both sides? Potentially. That's at least the way I'm interpreting Look, it. You can't blame the guy. If it's three, 400, three, 300, 400, 500 million on the table, I mean... <laughs> That's just ridiculous. Like, how do you say no to that? I, I don't. I know, I've never has, had a piece of paper that says yeah, sign here you, and you get five hundred million. You'd do it in the. It'd second. be quick. Yeah, it'd be quick. But I and, have a stamp. And and listen, John's got plenty of money, but that's just that's generational money. That is, take your family's. I mean, you're set for ages. Your family. I mean, and your family's oh, family. just on, on down until so. the world ends. Listen, I hope he stays on the PGA tour. Um, I want him playing against the best players in the world as often as possible, but. We'll just sit back and see what happens. And he's the guy that's in the majors and all that sort of stuff going forward. So I think the one big thing that could be taken from him that really, really matters to him is the Ryder Cup. Yep. And we'll see how that shakes. We got two more years till Beth Page. A lot can happen from now till then in terms of who's allowed, who's not, all that sort of stuff. All right. Well, let's get to our episode this week with a very special human. Well, not sure if he is human, but mm. I'll be honest. It's always fun sitting down with Gary McCord. I have no freaking clue what we talked about. <laughs> we finished the show the day before the start of the member. Remember, I walked in the next morning, was grabbing breakfast, sat down with Gary, as we typically do, uh, chopping it up for a few minutes. And he's like, what the hell did we talk about last no night? Clue. And I was like, that's actually a really good question. We normally like bullet point, like, here's our guest. Here's what we talked about for this one. I was like, I don't really know what will be on there. All right. Well, let's see if y'all can figure it out. Here's the great Gary McCord on Subpar. Okay, folks, we have a real treat in store today one of the one of the great human beings i would say on the planet he's one of the greatest golf broadcasters ever he was the greatest putter in the world of yeah. golf in 1984 yeah. that's factual God, uh, how long ago when were you born that year <laughs> 85 <laughs> over here way, i caught work. the last what am i here i caught the last five months of your great putting wow yeah that's when great. I, was, I might i might not remember you're just coming through golf world at that time when you were just a little casual reading old? in the Good. crib Good. You know how it goes. Good Anyways, his name is Gary McCord, if you haven't gathered him? it from now. And he's in the house. And he occasionally shoots his age. What else did I leave off the resume? That's nothing. I okay. got nothing. Hold on. We're going to go back to that real quick. You said occasionally shoot your age. Because I was sitting with you at the table at Whisperock the other day. You told me you always break your age, which is you said 75 that to us on radio, now, too. It, it, yeah, it's 75. Uh, going on closer to 70, 
six trombones. Um, <laughs> as you as you get older, you learn how to manipulate what you shoot according to what you're playing for. Because I can't do it every day. I probably can't do it two times a week. So you've got to if the hell with it most of the time and you shoot what you got and get your handicap. Eh, eh. And then if the money comes down on the table or you don't like somebody and you want to beat the shit out of them, mm -hmm. then you go ahead and go, okay, well, I'm a, you know, two handicap and here we go. And you kind of focus up a little bit, but you can't, this goes at about 55 when you get out there and you start playing and you, you know, you used to play with the boys and hit shots, but at 55, you know, three or four holes, you forgot. What, what, what did I hit at that? What, what was that? And then it gets worse. And then it gets worse. And then it's nine holes or nine of the holes. You don't even know what you're doing. I mean, it's like, <laughs> dude, what happened Sounds here? Sounds perfect. So you learn how to manage. Does that make sense? You learn how to manage all that crap. And then once in a while, you got to put it all together. But boy, it gets harder and harder. Well, your friends threw you right under the bus. They said, if you did your age in dog years, you might break your age. Mm. I That's hurtful. <laughs> That's and hurtful. I, and, here's, and are you talking about all the ingredients at this time of the year here? Where they just I, put, I put right a, grass in. I'm putting a number on a scorecard, and is it lower than 75? That's all it is. If in April, when the fairways are hard, <laughs> and I can hit four irons instead of three woods at these par fours, I'm going to beat you. I'm going to beat 75. Yeah, not now. Now it's just all right, brutal. Well, let's revisit this in April. Hopefully everything's yeah, going all right. It will go to April. April. Hopefully I'm alive, because <laughs> now it's day to day. In fact, it's when you get up in the morning at my age, you go to yourself, well, what do I do now? You kind of don't That's think. That's a great that, way to wake up the wow. morning. What do I do now? Okay, I, would I got kill time to, wake to do up whatever I want because I made it through that. So let's to the next night. Yeah, that feels like a dream you scenario. You guys aren't dream scenario. Yeah, you're, you're not there yet because you were born in 84, 85 mm -hmm. when I won the. That's, that's, yeah, that's when I, I came in and I said, I got to see this. Yeah. And I just kind of just yeah. forced my way oh, out. You can you know actually I mean? read. I said, is that guy putting as like good as they say? Let me out of here. Uh, let's get, <laughs> I want to spy on to see this. How does he do that? That's All when right. I knew. Well, enough about your golf game. Yeah. Because that was really fun. Let's talk about <laughs> what is going on in the world of golf now, because I know you have a lot of opinions on it. As we're sitting here today, another report came out that it's finalized. John Rahm is going to live, which, by the way, that has not been confirmed by him or his team at all. That's just Twitter, which any it just amazes me, these Twitter accounts where it can be. Gary McCord's mustache says that John Rahm is going over there. And people are like, look, it's done. That's it's a, a good deal. account. That's a good account. But what do, you, account. what do you think about everything that's going on between Liv, PGA Tour, and just the game of golf in general? I, I, you know, I think it's like everything. If you look at life now and everything, you don't really know what's going on. We've got AI. we got CG. You're watching stuff on the news. Is that a real picture? Is that... Are they saying those things or is AI doing all that? Is CG doing it? You can read stuff. Just like you said, is it true? I'm at that point in my life now where I read something and I think everything is wrong. It's all disinformation. I like that. Everything. And the tour is the epitome of that right now. I've never heard so many rumors going back and forth. And it's chaos. Regardless of what's going on, regardless of what you read, regardless of what you believe, the outcome is, it's chaotic. It really is chaotic. And until we get some rudders in the water, or these boats are going towards a certain direction, and a unified direction, it is going to be chaotic. And I don't know if any of these boats have got rudders in them right now. So your guess is as good as mine. I Eventually, if you think it out and you go, okay, I look into my crystal ball and I see what's going on. I see that there are a lot of world, a lot of tours around the world all trying to gain access to world golf ranking points. And at some point, it's all going to be one. And on some point, there are going to be 20 events worldwide you use the system to get into those events let's say there's 75 guys they're all playing um and you play your 15 events let's say and then you go back to your other tours and you qualify to play in those elevated events but the big purse is going to be at the end with those events and someone is going to be up here at the top of this thing coordinating that whole thing and right now i got no idea who that would be 
or where that would be, where the money is coming from, whether it be the Saudis, whether it be some corporation over here that wants to buy equity and, and take a position on the tour, which then is another box of rats. Uh, I don't know. I am, I am confused. And you know I get confused a lot. Yes, but you I'm do. Really but confused. That brain is But beautiful. it's because it changes every three weeks. Every time, you, like, the whole ship turns if around believe, every three weeks, right? If you believe all this. But in believe. some cases, it actually has happened, like... PJ Tour, we don't like the PIF. We don't, we'll never be affiliated with them. We do things this way over here. They do things over here. Oh, a few months later, it's like, we're thrilled to announce that we're going to be partnered with the PIF. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's like, okay, well, that seems pretty different than what I heard yeah. from before. So you don't, Again. like, actually, in like in reality, it does turn around yeah. like, like that in times. Yeah. Not just the fake stuff. No. By yeah. the way, if you're not watching on YouTube, I highly recommend it right now because... McCord looks like he's running a damn musical over here with his hands going all over the place. He's, a, he's an animated character. I'm part of if you, yeah, if yeah. You, yeah. If you haven't been when around. When you were up yeah. in the booth, obviously the camera wasn't on. You, you, did you get the hands going and everything? I mean, other than when you slapped me at Byron Nelson. <laughs> oh, dude, when we did radio, the, the cord's only the cord's only two feet long, and he paces around and he like pulls the thing out half the time like your, your mic's not even on anymore. No. Okay. Yeah. So, Boda here. Can't wait to start doing television. So we're at Dallas, and he goes, you know, for the last month, he's gone, hey, hey, I want to do what you do. I want to do what you do. Um, I want to move to Scottsdale. Where, to be that fair, was I in was still playing DC at the time. when you told me that. You were still playing. D.C., you said, Scottsdale, I'm going to move there. I need to get in West Rock. I need mm -hmm. to get in there. I got to. I want to do what you do. You, he kept bothering me. So I don't I think finally, that's exactly how this Yeah, you this did. Feels you bothered accurate. me. You bothered me. The TV I'm, thing at Dallas, I had a cast on my hand. I just had surgery two days before it, and... I was, I was still hanging out in Dallas because I had surgery yeah. there. And you said, do you want to come up in the booth? I said, sure. And then I texted you that morning and said, I've been drinking with my friends all day. And you said, even better. So <laughs> have I. <laughs> of course, said, so have I. This, this was the worst possible <laughs> apocalyptic event of all time. So here he Disagree. comes. Disagree. He comes up in the tower and we're doing cable. Okay. It's a Thursday. We're doing cable Thursday. He doesn't know what he's going on. He's got, of course, a girlfriend with him. And she's drunk. This was many years ago, Natalie. He's, oh, he's a, boy. He's drunk. She's drunk. And here they come. Bopping up the tower. Okay. And he this sits down. He goes, what are we going to do? What are we doing? I said, okay, here. I, I told the boys, <laughs> pop pop the headset. The exit. So we got two headsets up there in case I get so put it on. I said, okay, we're going to come to our hole 16. I'm going to take it in. You don't say a word. I'll ask you a question. You answer quick. And you get out. Okay? The first time we go... I go, blah, 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 and I ask him a question. He starts answering, and it goes back to, to uh, I, it might have been Nance, I don't know who it was, I'm up in the tower. He keeps talking. He starts, not even on his hole now. Nobody's listening, but he's talking. Well, da 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 da, -da. Meanwhile, he's drinking two beers while he's going this way. <laughs> his girlfriend's warning around. She's sitting My right friend. in front of me there. Your friend, excuse me. Jesus. I don't know. His niece, soulmate. Niece, I don't yeah. know. Uh, and anyway, it was a total catastrophe. He wasn't even disagree. Close. You were awful. You were just you were talking. To... You were just awful. By the way, that's a perfect example of what needs to change in TV because you asked me a question. I had a thought. I was trying to finish it when they went to the next hole. Who gives a shit if we shouldn't have to stop talking? Let us finish our thought. That's what Who he cares said. about the Here's golf? The deal. Here's Hear the deal. my Hold words. It. Nance it's makes Thursday and Friday. Nance makes thirteen million a year, and he's going to make fifty dollars a year. Okay, and he wants to keep talking while they throw it to Nance. Nance enjoyed it. Economically, is that a good way to go about business? Nance no. probably loves it. No, he might love it, I'd but take I doubt a little breather. it. Anyway, he came in very raw, and. Um, but he's got a lot of BS, and I like that. I like the BS. So somehow we, you kept going. You you actually got work somewhere else, Golf Channel or something, yeah. and he started to. So I, at first I had him. Remember I said keep your phone on, and I'm te I'm watching while he's on the air. I'm texting you, you dumb shit. You can't say that. Don't ever say that. Don't do this. A lot and of abuse from my, from my guy over here is supposed to be helping me. Well, I was helping you. He's a tough love type yeah, of guy. Yeah, I was listening, you were guy, and you didn't, you didn't take long. You found your way, and you're fine. So I never, remember it didn't last too long I was texting you, and you finally figured it out when to shut up and when to ask questions and always bring in what? Faldo at 18. They love that. The he suits, doesn't work there anymore. No. When you were there, <laughs> when you were there, you bring in Faldo at all times, and then the suits will love you, and they'll sign you another contract. And that's what we did. Yep.
And look how it shook out. Yeah, look, everything's great. Everything's Why the everything's hell did we per- ask you to come back on this podcast? So. Uh, this is why I love having my dad in here. What else you need? You're, you're solving a lot of the problems right now. Well, I don't know how we went from like live and where all things are going into that story, but I, like, I do that. I didn't do that. Just, Here's sorry. what I did. Uh, oh, I'll give you the. I'll give you this one because oh. like you and I, we were doing the radio show together and stuff, yep. and that's when all the shit broke loose. Live started happening. It actually took place, and the people who's going, who's all this stuff. Well, one of the big conversations was like, all right, who's going on the broadcast side? Your boy, mm-hmm. David Ferry. He was also part of the radio show mm-hmm. at the time. He went. And for a good while, I was pretty convinced you were going. Like, we had some conversations, and I thought, and then we had the kind of like a heart to heart one night up on your patio, having some drinks. It's like, man, that travel, like, you want to do that? Well, you don't need to do that. Like, you're made, you know? Um, do you, are you happy you didn't do it? Do you wish you'd gone? Any regrets throughout well, all that? Well, I mean, you know, the last conversation I had with, with Norman was, Greg, I'm 75. I don't want to go to Adelaide. I don't want to go <clears throat> to Hong Kong. I don't want to go to Riyadh. I'm not going to do that. I'm too old to travel. Notice so, he didn't mention Bangkok. And Bangkok, you can <laughs> Good place to go. Yeah, that. Do that one. Saigon, I don't care wherever they go. And Amsterdam, I can't do if you it. play there, I'll go. I said, if you did, which the future is going to be anyway, if you do, all, all golf shows are going to have their broadcast team is going to be in a studio somewhere in the United States. Every week it's going to be there, and you put two people on the ground, you're on the ground, somebody do interviews, they will not know I'm in a studio in Dallas, Texas with the two other guys talking. Put a backdrop of the 18th hole there, they will never know. It's impossible. The money you save by putting your, your heat right in the middle, travel, putting up things for them to set it up in the thing. It's all going to be done that way. Believe that me. sucks. It's going to be done that way in the future because of money, because golf garners no ratings. None. Zero. Zero. And that's the last time you see a contract where the PGA Tour has signed it in, uh, with media rights in 2022 going to 2030. The Tour gets $76 million a year from that contract. Per year up to 2030. Well, those guys are going to go, uh-uh, no more. We're talking about CBS, NBC, who you can see right now is taking all the boys out, taking all of them out. It just doesn't make financial sense. So they're going to have to redo how they do this stuff. What was the question? <laughs> if you regretted going, not doing live with see, David. That's what happened. What was the question? question? Yeah, well, you were well, on a nice route there. Well, I was. But yeah, I you were really route. going. I, you, you forget about... It was about, about just going to live with David. You for, yeah, you forget about you the, go? the origin. Yeah, and I yeah. was going to go, and then the money, <laughs> believe me, was insane. Greg never told me what it'd be, but I had to ask Faraday, let me ask what you're making. I need... A point, <laughs> and I, I went. What did you? Yeah. What did you say? It's a lot. And uh, and uh, he told me, and I said, okay. I never told anybody. Uh, to this day, I've never told anybody. But that was interesting. You do it now. But uh, yeah. Um. Anyway, I, I. What What's he think? Like he's doing it. He was their big pull. We got David Faraday. He's one of the best to ever do it. Is he having? A, you talk to him still. We were talking for a while. Like, is he enjoying it? Is he glad he did it? No, what, I, I, David on David's one of those guys that likes to travel. He's still young enough. With David, 67. He doesn't sit still well six. either. He doesn't sit still like at all. Yeah. At all. The only thing I couldn't understand about David, i tell you this now, and I've said it before, for David to do that, to jump, the only thing you'd think about is he did it for money. There is nobody on this earth that I know that cares less about money than David Faraday. So to this day, I don't know. I've asked him a couple of times, and he mumbles, and he goes here and there as, as he does. You need a net to get him back. But to this day, I don't know why he jumped and went and did that. He's and you know, in in, in the press, he says, "Well, I did it for the money." Do you think I there was don't. anything to do with like when you and he when when you two were working together? It was back and forth. It was probably like the golden era, I would say, of like golf broadcasting. You guys got a little loose and had fun, and that's what made it fun, right? And then when you weren't working together, like it's hard when no one's there to return the ball, right? Was it is something like I I feel like I'm not being like myself here, I, and I can go to this place and and be a little more loose, be a little more reckless, be the way I want to be, as opposed to kind of having to work within the confines of what they want. On that's my opinion, on a big one. That's I, that's I, I, think, I think he wanted I mean, to be David Faraday. I think is that's my a thought. good because he know he knew he was going to be the guy in. Obviously, you see the team they got. He was going to buy the focal. Yeah, he's the guy. He's, the, he's the guy. And if you break down everything and know that he could care less about money, that is the only reason 
Yeah, he would have. He, he had he a show and his tours and right. stuff. Like, dude, like, does everyone want more money? Sure. Yeah. But like, do you want yeah, to make that kind of a decision? He likes for to, money yeah. when you're set. Like, probably not. I think that that's my theory. Is like, and I've no, never I, asked I, him directly, I, but it's like he wants to go be the show and be yep. exactly say exactly what he wants, how he wants, when he wants, yep. and no one's gonna say like, don't do that layout or whatever. But the problem with that is somebody's got to be watching. <laughs> and I don't know if anybody. I haven't seen That's, their numbers. They won't deal with the numbers. They stopped um, doing up. Yes, yeah, the numbers. They, stopped, no, they, could, they couldn't. No, they wasn't good. So I, you're talking, but it's there's nobody out there listening. So, but like this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every, every time whatever we do a podcast, say, I don't care say what whatever I say. you want, dude. You're free. All right, some big news here from Subpar. We have officially launched our own YouTube page. Make sure to subscribe at Golf underscore Subpar on YouTube. Check out this week's video uh like subscribe do all the stuff colt we got some cool behind the scenes stuff coming and uh give you a little outside look at some of the stuff outside the studio so please like please subscribe you're the best listeners in the game we love you back to the show look into your crystal ball though like what do you think three years from now are they all together is Liv still doing its thing because i mean you've, they have good players over there there's no doubt i mean that brooks kepka dustin johnson cam smith and nobody watches so what happens? Say they say they happen to get John Rom and other big players. I mean, is it automatically going to become the tour to watch? Or what? What's well, gonna... I mean, the one thing holding up, and the the reason that he is keeps talking about I got to get certain things done before I commit is the fact that they cannot exist without World Golf ranking points. Mm-hmm. They can't. They can't get the big players because the big players will finally after not getting world ranking points going to fall out of the majors, and that's what they're there for. They're trying to build their legend. I mean, like um, Taylor Gooch is not in the majors yeah, right now. Zero. Right, right. Zero. Which is his and he was just coming into his zone. Million. He's one of the guys I thought was like and, surprised. And, I mean, and his... Guys, if you look at this thing and what's going to go on, it will be unified in some way, shape, or form, and there's going to be a world tour of 15 events, whatever. Take your pick. 15, 20 events. It's going to be at the top. All the other tours can be below it, and they're going to be – sanctioned to bring players in these players fall out i remember 75 let's say so yeah. let's say they take the bottom 25 huh, they go down play but you got to work back up to get that you get that big piece of the pie here because there are revenue streams involved with this there are team events uh just what tiger's doing now with tgl just what they're trying to do and live is build team build equity in the team and then you go buy the team you buy the merchandise you buy all that it's the Ryder Cup has put this whole thing in perspective as w- of what but, to do. But the Ryder Cup's not about money for players. I mean, I get it. The PGA of America, <laughs> yeah. the European Tour, the yeah. DP World Tour make a shit ton of money off of it. But team golf, like we talked about this on our Sirius XM show the other day. Like team golf for me does nothing except for the Ryder Cup and President's Cup. Like, And that's different. That's yeah, country like, versus country or continent versus continent. Like I, I root for the U.S. because we're from here, you know. But let, let's let's not let's let's look at the economics of it. If I create teams, I build equity in that teams, and I can get people to come in and buy the equity in that team, and then buy the process of the revenue streams of that team. That's huge. In this, where we're going with this thing, that is going to be the pinnacle to get outside revenue coming in to bolster these things so I can sell everything involved with my team, my five guys or whatever. But do you think that's going to be bigger? Than the actual professional game of golf, like Could the be. team, see, Could I just be. I just don't see that. Like I mean, golf for what we've known in our entire life. Tell life, me about all the other sports. They're not. It's not the same. But that's geographic. Yeah. That's like like look. Okay, tennis. Bingo. I root for the Broncos because I'm you know, from geographic. Denver. What's lived doing? They're putting all the guys together in the same country, making teams. It all gets down. It all okay, gets down tennis? to the equity. Like I used this example the other day. Like you really tuned into Wimbledon to watch the finals of the doubles? No, like, you don't care. It's, not too many people it, watch tennis. I think more people watch tennis than watch golf. I don't think so. Around the world? I don't I don't think more so. More people watch volleyball, thank you, Frank Nablo, around yeah, the world than watch golf. I just learned that. Where do they watch it? On TV. Okay, and then you've got to look at the revenue of that. It go get get rid of everything. You're saying else around the world. And get, I would say tennis is watched more money. than golf. Get money involved, okay? Get money involved. Tennis is a one guy thing. You can't sell equity in one guy. You can give him patches on his thing, Person. pay him money, the whole deal. So it it gets the bigger, better, better team 
is going to make a lot more money than the New York Yankees, the Dodgers, uh, uh, the uh, Boston Celtics, blah, 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 blah. The Clicks and are not going to make more that. than the Lakers. The team aspect yeah. for me <laughs> in golf is tough. Like, I think live, you get enough good players, people will watch. Wherever the best players are, the best talent are, people will watch it. But, like, I root for the Broncos because I grew up in Denver, and I that's where I'm from, and I've always loved them. He loves the Cowboys. He's from Dallas. Like, our, our colleges, you know, you, you you have rivalries. You just hate these guys no matter what. They're in our conference. We don't like them. Like, there's built-in allegiances that have started from day one. Golf from day one for everybody has been an individual sport. I root for Tiger Woods. I root for Phil Mickelson. I root for whoever, John Rahm. As soon as you put them, package them together in teams, I'm not like, oh, I'm a diehard Name it, whatever. What's one of the fireballs. names? Fireball. Yeah, fireball. I'm a diehard fireballs guy now. Because it just started yesterday. It's like an expansion team in the NFL or the NBA. It's like, dude, and they already have their fans built in because it's geographic. But if you got a guy from Spain and a guy from the U.S. and a guy from Mexico on the same team, it's like, are you gonna be diehard for that team because you got one guy that you like? I just think the team aspect. It's hard to build. The, team sports are great because they have passion. Yankees play the Red Sox. They hate each other. Uh, Ryder Cup, U.S. versus Europe. Awesome. President's Cup, same thing. It doesn't have like in golf. I, I don't see where that passion comes from. I mean, if you know, I'm just kind of foiling away here. I've had no process of this, figuring this stuff out. But if I, if you took right now, because the game of golf has really expanded worldwide, and now we've got golfers really good from all over the world. In fact, a lot of golfers from a lot of countries are good. So if you put this all together and you put Pakistan against India, <clears throat> if you put all these different countries together, they have their teams and they meet and there's a final deal, a final frontier where these teams are going South Africa, uh, Korea, blah, 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 and put them all together. Now you got team golf and you've got, again, I'll go Pakistan against India. You've got, uh, you've got, you, you name adversaries and you put them together in this deal and all of a sudden it, what to, it fuels the press, it fuels everything. And then you, build, again, I just keep going back to equity in golf and how where it's going to go we've been individual for a long time we've got a problem because tiger woods was our equity and now tiger at his age is is you know he's not going to play that much mm -hmm. who's that guy who's who's the next guy well they're going to be torn going where to go right now it's rom and a couple of these guys are they're not close to tiger woods not close so we're going to have a big dip as far as is our super stardom uh uh star that's shining brightly on the tour it's gonna be hard to find but in mass that against that against that and again i don't know i'm just i'm just guessing i'm just trying to figure out where this thing is going and how they're going to get together with with old archaic groups that run golf that are deep-seated in tradition, everything else, trying to keep up. Now, they're trying to do a TGL and, you know, put them under lights and put them in a, put them in a, a simulator and let them go. I don't know. I, I don't know if that's going to work or not, but at least they're trying to get out of the USGA, you know, PGA, whatever. No, they're trying to the make way. it fun and bring in a younger, yeah. Yeah. different audience. There's no doubt about that. I mean, the TGL, it's a Monday night, Tuesday night, whatever thing. It's not trying to be a legit tour. Like, it's just supposed to be fun. I just don't see where the team golf, like, that's where I just, like, the team golf, I don't think is ever going to be that big of a deal. I don't see young kids going out and being, wanting to buy merchandise from their favorite team. And let, I, I just don't see how you do it. Like, Roy, you got Roy McIlroy, you got John Rahm, Scotty Scheffler. Like, how many are going to be on a team? You know, what, you, you mentioned Pakistan versus India. You going to do Team USA? There's 900 really good players from mm -hmm. USA. Take five. Yeah, exactly. Take I mean, five. Be a good team. Good I just team. don't see where... And by the way, this whole thing's propped up by FanDuel and DraftKings. I just don't see where team golf will ever overtake major championship golf. Um, in our sport, probably not in the near future, but I'm not looking in the near future. I'm looking at what's going to happen in the future, 20 years from now, yeah, and where it's going. Different. And basically, it, again, if you just look at the dollars the one thing about golf it will attract dollars so it'll attract revenue streams so how do you produce something that doesn't rely on a superstar one guy because we're a third page sport golf it's never in the first page unless. it's always in the third unless it's tiger woods and he brought us to the front page but he's good that's a bad business plan really a bad one 
because you're not going to get a Tiger Woods, but every 20 years, 25 years, how can, oh, best. how can you build a business plan that has, well, we'll take somebody, we'll take Jordan Spieth, good guy or everything else, just not the guy to, to I lead. Mean, I mean, all these guys, it's not fair. It's, it's unfair to name names, but yeah. no one's going to be Tiger. No. So how do you build a business plan I mean, you, that is a superstar that you get on the front page and go, hey, let's go watch golf because that guy's playing. I mean, you know yeah. how t TV works. I mean, you mentioned golf a third party the way the way the money is it's yeah. just not the ratings are nothing compared to the the big games and we use it all the time i mean the highest rated golf tournament of all time was 2019 when tiger won the masters yep and it's less than the average nfl sunday game the average just freak day the other day on thanksgiving cowboys commanders had 41 million viewers you can add up most of the PGA Tour season, and you might not get that's there. over double, isn't it? The Tiger ratings in twenty nineteen wasn't it nineteen million? I believe like it was, I believe it was fifteen, and the average PGA the average NFL Sunday game is nineteen. Yeah, the Titans and the Jags draw it did just more give an than idea the biggest too, golf the, event the, ever. The PGA Tour, um, any given tournament, if I remember these numbers, that's hundred years ago, and I was there. Um, Saturday was doing about uh, oh a one five to a two. Mm -hmm. Um, and one rating point is 975,000 people used to be. And then the weekend was maybe get up to 2526. You'd be ecstatic. If Tiger was playing, your numbers would go up accordingly. But that's, you could, you, three of us could throw a dinner, invite a couple of comedians, throw a dinner. We could get pretty close to those ratings. We really could. So how do you develop a revenue stream with those kind of ratings? How do you do it? I, I don't know. I just that's where I disagree. I just don't see team golf as doing that. But maybe it is. But in Try fairness, like twenty years from in now, in fairness, I don't know. Colt and I grew up like I use the NFL reference: Cowboys, Broncos. We grew up. We started from day one. You like the Cowboys? I like the Broncos. Right? That's where we come. Like that's all we know is is that type of stuff. If there's a kid out there and starts getting into golf and all he knows is he's in Europe or wherever and it's I like the cliques, I like the fire. Like that's how he started learning the game of golf. Then all of a sudden, maybe team golf could be like a a thing you know but it for us who all we've ever known is individual golf major championships that's what matters you know tournaments that's what matters it's hard to all of a sudden segue from that and be like oh that doesn't matter let's get into this team aspect it's gonna have to start from like the jump yeah and you know we all hang around the same guys and the young kids young kids now are 35 40 right right, right. and Super young. they don't nobody watches golf anymore they watch to bet because they've got you against me on the last round, and I'm plus 120, and you're minus 130. And that's it. They're not watching golf. They're not watching football. They're watching how their fantasy team's doing. I agree. I mean, NFL Red Zone's like the greatest yeah, thing ever. I, mean, I would love to in know the, the ratings history. on that. Just yeah. in history. You just take some sort of amphetamine, mm -hmm. and you sit there for seven hours, and there's no they commercial see. breaks, and you're just seeing balls in the air and guys running. And when you're done, you just go... What happened? Yeah. What the hell it's, just it's, happened there? Unless it's your team playing, it's it hard to watch hard like to a watch. regular game no anymore. Question. After you watch Red Zone, it's like, touchdown. Oh, they're in the Red no Zone. Question. Oh, yeah, touchdown. It's like, dude, it's just I all mean, the I, shit you want to see take all a day look, long. Take a look here where we live. Okay, the biggest thing that's happened in the golf worldwide is the 16th hole here. Every tournament in the world is trying to duplicate the 16th hole because of what? Revenue streams. <laughs> That's a giant revenue stream. I could give you numbers. You're a, you're a, a, a Thunderbird. Thunderbird, right? I, mm -hmm. I heard the number on the 16th hole last year. I heard the number. Revenue was $19 million on that one hole. I know what they it's sell silly. the boxes for. It's close, isn't it? It's silly. Yeah. Just that one, just that one, one venue hole. dominates one hole. And we're watching these tournaments. tournaments down in Australia. Do you watch this? They got that, what, 17th hole? They're going nuts. They're drinking and everything else. So what are they doing? You just revenue streams. How do you get them out there? Mm -hmm. Get them out there. They don't care about the golf. They care about having fun. Drinking, having fun, gambling. So there, there's your future. Guys, go drinking, get it. Drinking, having fun, gambling. I yeah. like those things. It sounds great. It sounds like a member guest. And the USG is going, what? Yeah. <laughs> what? What are we going to do now? So they, you got to keep up. you got to keep up with who's watching, who's clicking, who's buying the ads on that thing and the one thing golf's got gone one thing is their ads are prejudiced towards high-end demographics yeah and that's golf yeah mm -hmm. cadillacs ibm so every telecommunications Rolex. company everything yeah. everything high-end they got it. they don't care about the numbers they ever talk about the numbers if they did they'd be off the air golf would be off the air so 
Anyway, how do you keep up? And I think that's where golf is. The original question is how, how do we, as golf, keep up with where it's trending, where it's going? And that's an sure. un yeah. interesting question. It is. And I, I, one thing, though, I find it every time we bring up the team reference that we always use cliques. <laughs> it's only one of the only ones I can remember because like, I think it's oh, a sweet name. Man. Oh, the range goats. Do the and range no goats is a sick name? No one knows what a clique is anyway. Name it something everybody knows about. Yeah, there's a few Range other goats, ones. that's fine. Let's Since we're talking like big picture stuff, let's bring it back just a little more current to what's going on right now. Let's This framework agreement, December 31st, deadline. It can get pushed Never from happened. what I understand. Assuming something gets agreed upon with PJ Tour and Piv, doesn't there have to be a route back for the guys that left? to live, who have the lifetime ban to come back and play on the PJ Tour. It'd be hard to enter a hand, an agreement with the people funding that tour let, that now fund your tour yeah, and say let, your guys can't play. Let's go, let's go back to the out. There always has to be an exit. Got to give a guy a way out, okay? You never put anybody in a the corner. They're not going to do anybody any good, but give them a way out. And the way out is at the end, everybody's, the best players in the world are going to be playing for a lot of money in certain tournaments a year. That's it. That's what's going to happen. It's when Greg Norman first did this back in the world tour, when he proposed it at Sherwood, I was there. I was at the meeting CBS was doing. I listened and it was all about world tour and that it was a hundred years ago. And he's doing that. And that's where it's going to, it's going to end up that way. It's going to end up that there are going to be 15 of our name. I'm not 15 plus the four majors. And that's the pinnacle. And then you go down from there and you build your pyramid. So market it, do whatever you want, but that's what's going to happen. You can put in teams in there and everything, but it's going to be right. It's going to be an individual deal to get in those tournaments to play. It's just crazy to me that a sport, a major sport, like could totally overhaul the way they do things. With because I mean it's all when you when you look at the NFL, NBA, it's all or NHL, it's like everybody compares everybody to Gretzky in the numbers and the points and all this. Oh, it's the chase to get to Wayne Gretzky, and the NFL, it's the chase to get to whoever is the all-time passing leader and all that. In golf, it's like okay. Here's Tiger Woods, who's got 82 wins. And then all of a sudden, now we're going to have this world tour. So now PGA Tour wins aren't even going to be a thing. Like, it would just shock me if we just overhaul the entire professional game of golf. I mean, this whole thing was a panic buy. It was I, a total, know, I agree, it's a panic. Total panic buy yeah. by the tour. And all of a sudden, wait a minute, somebody else is going to start another tour? You're going to pay these guys a lot of money? Wait, wait, wait. No, I, I got an idea. We'll ban them all. We'll find them all. We'll hang their young. We'll do whatever. Uh, and then, <laughs> what? Jesus. Wait, what happened? What? What's going on? And then chaos. And now we're at, we're at the pinnacle of the chaos because something has to be done by a date, which there's no chance they get anything done. It has to be done. We don't, I mean, it, in the end, we don't even have a commission. We don't have anybody to lead us. PGA Tour, I'm talking about, to lead us where we're going. Who's leading us? It's a good question. Who's leading us? Because I mean, and to have a leader, you got to believe in a leader, correct? Yeah. And you know as well as I do, we got a lot of guys that we know on the tour, and I'm pretty sure most of them don't believe in our leader. I think there's a reason Tiger Woods came in and there's said, no uh, "I'm going to be on that player, no I'm question, be on that board." And none of this will ever happen again. So let me ask I, you. So, I, so what do you think is the future for Jay Monahan? Well, I don't. I so a long time. I so a long time ago. In his reactions and his flip, leaders don't flip. Uh, they have a destination. They have uh, a reason for the destination, resources to, for them to go to a certain direction. You don't go one way, expose a lot of players, alienate a lot of players, and then flip and go back when you're dealing with lives, money, families, everything. You, you can't do that. I'm not going to believe in that guy. The guy's steadfast, and he's he's got answers, and we're going to go there. Here's the reason. Let's go. Follow me, guys. I'm in. But I think, I think he has lost that credibility. I don't. I have you guys talked to anybody that said I think he's doing a great job. The, most the the common thing, and I say the same thing. It's like Jay's a very nice guy. He's always been great super guy. nice to me. Has he's he handled fantastic. this well? No. no, no. So do you trust him? When I mean, like you said, it's your livelihood. This is your job, mm -hmm. and you're going out there, and you have these guys have no clue. What's around the corner for them? None. And that's terrifying. None. None. Absolutely yeah. none. Yes, what's going on? Well, we we got 35 of them here where we play. Yeah. Tour players. And what do you think? I don't know. And none I of them are, know. are that good at keeping secrets. No. no. <laughs> none of them are all like, none. oh, we actually do know, but we're not going to tell anyone. None. And none. when you when you constantly address things as a, your tour, your tour, all the communication yeah. to the players, it's your tour. And then you 
go and make the biggest decision probably in the history of golf since I've been old enough to know what's going on. And none of them are aware of it. And they find out the exact same way the three of us do, which is on like Twitter the following day that that decision has been made. It's hard to go. All right. Is it our tour? Because you didn't talk to a single person about this. And when you're hearing from Tiger that that he found out like that, or Rory even, the one guy you'd probably expect to be in that room, it's kind of like, you know, your your words don't match up with the action. It's, it's it's a tour run by tour players, an elected board. I'm gonna. I was on the board when you guys were born. Okay, eighty three to eighty seven. When you were really good at putting. Really good at putting. Yeah. Eighty four. You read the article. Yeah, I read it. Yeah. Um. So when the, the tour's gone through this, when it started in sixty eight, and we broke, and then we came in, and then we had sixty guys that were exempt, and then seventy. If I remember the numbers, I put seventy three percent were qualifiers. Okay, going from Monday to Monday. That didn't look right. Okay, after a while, it's come on, guy. We're trying to make a living, so let's get, let's get a little more socialism involved. Instead of sixty, let's expand it to one twenty-five. Expansion, bring in more players, give everybody a chance to make a living. Okay, I get playing here, I get playing there. It had to be expansion, and it and it got got uh, it passed through the all exempt tour, passed through came in and now all of a sudden we're going the opposite direction because we have a rival tour. They have 48 guys and all of a sudden, uh oh, we we've got to keep our guys in. So we've got to take all the money and start putting it back into that clump of players again. 25 players. Okay, mm-hmm. whatever. Let's put it there. Put it there. The rest of you guys go away. And here's what we're gonna, we're gonna fight that PIP program. What the hell? Hundred yeah. million? Hundred Hundred mi- million. Oh, what? So now all of a sudden we've got capitalism coming back in. We had socialism. Now we got capitalism coming back in to fight the evil empire, the other entity, right? So now all of a sudden I knew it as soon because I went through it with the other thing. Guys start talking here. Wait a minute. These guys are making all this money, and I'm 58th on a money list, and I get nothing. I don't get playing these tournaments. I don't get part of the pit. Well, wait a minute. This is supposed to be the tour, not 20 guys making all the money. What's going on? We're starting to hear that. That that voice is going to get louder and louder and louder. To be fair, you know how many people made over a million dollars this year on the PJ Tour? Yeah, but that's inflation. Getting, I know. It's 139 yeah, guys yeah, made a yeah. million dollars more. And by the way, we're all doing, when we're doing it, we're doing all of our expenses are ours. Yeah. And we're paying people to do yeah. this. We're flying. We're keeping a family at home. God almighty. So that number, you know, I, I made the top 60 one year. With fifty eight thousand dollars, so I was just hell of a year. I spent thirty just trying to get the pro-am appearance. Now, yeah, Yeah. (laughs) then I'd pay taxes on that. Wait a minute, I never knew. I just listened to Lee Trevino on No Laying Up, and he, I didn't know about the if you make a cut, you were into the next week. If as long as you're a member of the PGA, this was way back in the day. In his rookie year, he said he made it thirteen weeks in a row. Ended up being rookie of the year with thirty three thousand dollars. Yeah, there you go. That is wild. How about this one? Gene, you more than that for making a cut in a signature. You want to talk about hard in the old That's days? That's a jicky win. Gene Littler told me when he got his card and got on the tour, you had to play the first six months, you never allowed to get a paycheck. And he finished, I think, finished second or third twice. Wait a minute. How does yeah. that work? Yes. Never. You were going to play, but we're not going to pay you? Yeah. 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 Well, that's stupid. How about that? That feels so like bad business. That feels like criminal. It feels like we're, we're free, doing a lot better labor. now, but I mean that's kind of the evolution of the absurdity of the whole thing. And now it's gone the other way. I mean <laughs> what I, what I mean what what would the other day said they made what 10 million didn't even know he was getting it because of was that Rory for something? But oh, one of the challenges at yeah, the end of the yeah, year. Something. Yeah, something. Like you got the you go, on, you got all these different challenges now. 4 million. Oh, that I doesn't got, show up in the earnings either. No, that just no. that's not so anyway, course. the money is idiocy. How long will the money stay there? Who knows? Because now you're going back to the sponsors, and the sponsors now we're going to have to keep up with the elevated events, and the sponsor going to have to pick it out of their money. They're the ones that run the tournament. They're the ones that produce the purse. They're going to take it out of what? They're going to take it out of their charities to put in the purses to get these players because, as you know, when you're playing elevated events, and I'm looking at those, and how many others? 15, eight. 12, 8? Okay, well, eight. 12, you include majors okay, yeah. players. So let's say with those, and all of a sudden their schedule is they're not going to play the other events. So how are you going to advertise and get TV? Oh, man. I was talking to one of wow. the, we were at one of the dinners with one of the tournaments last year that was a signature event, is what yep. they're called now, signature. 
and they were explaining it to me and how they went to Jay and Bass were like, okay, so we just spent an extra $13 million this year and we got four more players yeah. than we normally get. Mm -hmm. Like, just yeah. like, why? Really? Why would I do that? Like, Phoenix Open here I, is a great example. Like, it doesn't matter who plays. It doesn't. Because they get the same number of ticket sales, yep. the same number of hospitality tents, corporate boxes, all that. Yep. Like, Tiger played. Everybody's like, oh my God, it's going to be crazy. I'm like, no, it it's going to be the same. There's going to be bigger. There's going to be more people on the front nine watching golf. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, I think, in my opinion, it would be dumb of the Phoenix Open to spend extra money. They don't have to. to be, they don't have to. No. And still, you're going to get Scotty no. Scheffler. You're going to get John Rahm. Yeah. You're going to get a ton of big name players. Yeah. And it, it's and it, it's a really interesting dynamic because they have hit upon, again, we'll talk about revenue streams. Because of the city, uh, the youthfulness of this city, Scottsdale, to put on a tournament that's a party. Mm -hmm. And everybody else trying to duplicate that. And they'll create more revenue streams because models evolve on how to do this. How do you go about, you know, you've got a tournament in North Carolina, you've got one in Florida, I got one in wherever. How are we going to do that model? And the model now is here in Phoenix. There's the model. There it is. They're making, I heard the number, okay, and it's, it's ridiculous what they're making. Ridiculous. So we want that. And you can find, to watch Australia. That I sit there and going, I'm, are you kidding me? They're doing the same thing. Oh, yeah. Every, you, have a, you, you have like to. You can't. Like, you try to recreate 16. You can't. It's like a culture. Yeah. This is like the event. Like, it's just what's around. You could damn near host a Corn Ferry Tour event during the Phoenix Open, and it'd be the same. That wouldn't matter. They really right. don't care. Like, Tiger, one guy, may, and it doesn't move it really at all. That, but you could take, like, Rory is, just played last year because it was a designated. He doesn't normally play, right? Like, no one... It's That's a, it's a one-off. It's a different. It's That's a different the beast model entirely. Because then you don't rely on superstars. You rely on the existence of your revenue streams and your model. Okay, build it. Do you need? Do you need superstars or anything? No, absolutely not. Just what you said. You don't need them. You need an event for people to go to to celebrate to do whatever and watch golf. They don't. You watch need golf. that Phoenix like scaled out. Like this exactly. is the way the the, That's the where continent it's, views That's golf. That's where it's going. You put that with gambling and, and DraftKings and and um, all the stuff that we've signed. Um, that's that's where it's where it's going to go. That's why I think. Anyway, that's why I think golf golf's going that direction. It's going to be interesting Team, to see what happens in later. the future. Um, just switching gears because we don't have a whole lot of time left. Big into conspiracy theories, chasing Bigfoot, all that. I need to know the biggest conspiracy theory right now in the world. I need Gary McCord's opinion on it. Our existence. No. Our existence. Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift, oh. true love, or is it all a publicity stunt? Mm. Absolutely true love. Love, yeah. I think I agree with you. Always believe in true love. I think love. that's for forever. Don't <laughs> believe. If you put true love against anything else, you never check the other box. <laughs> ever, ever, ever. All right, all you that's, Swifties out there can calm down now. It's true it's love, true according love. to Gary McCoy. That thing is forever. That's like you and Diane. Well, God, I love the it's, way she answered the phone. Did you hear it today? Forever, okay? Earlier today, the way she and answered it. God bells bless her. are gone and doves are flying. And uh, let's all, because nowadays and what we're living in, we have to believe in that. Otherwise, the consequences of reality will take you into the bottom of the cauldron. The abyss. I listened to this yes. podcast the other day and they were talking about it. And they're like, oh, it's 100% publicity stunt. The NFL needed to get bigger. I'm like, what? Yeah. It owns the planet. It, what are you and by about? the way, they did. Neither. The NFL, they did, actually. They they brought did. But the they NFL did. and Taylor Swift, neither of them need to get yeah. bigger. They're they're fine. You can't miss them. No. You cannot miss them right it's, now. Speaking on all your like weird shit and yeah. conspiracy theory, what's got your attention right now? Because I used to come over and be like, oh, dude, this is what I'm digging into this tribe in South America or whatever. What's What's got your, yeah, what's I, got your focus right okay, now? Okay, today, today, yeah. I went home. Uh, I hit a couple of balls at like, not like you today, four or five I really hours. Grinded. I hit it like 20 minutes. I got cold. I'm old. I go back in and I sit there. Okay. And, I, and I, I'm feeling pretty good about everything. So I want to feel bad about myself. And you'll get this. That's you, easy to do. I want to feel bad. So I turn on YouTube. It's, as you know, the only thing I watch. Mm -hmm. And I watched Eric Weinstein. And I sat there and on Joe Rogan and I tried to comprehend exactly what he was talking about. And he is a particle physicist, brilliant, Avi Loeb, uh, Brian Cox, all these physicists. And they're talking about the universe and where we are and what we are and who we are and why we're here in the different dimensions, simulation. 
and you figure out how stupid you are. <laughs> and I sat there and I went, you are a stupid son of a bitch. Because I can't follow him for two minutes. I'm trying, I'm trying like hell. Even play it back. But your awareness listen. is impeccable. Well, I, you I'm curious. It. Yeah. I'm curious and I'm going, wow. Because we were, we're talking about golf and all that. Wow, the shit they're talking about is mind-boggling yeah. of what this could be, of, of a simulation. They all believe we're in a simulation, which you, all of us are created, basically, matrix. We're created by computers, and we live out, and you keep adding on to your sims, that that software game, and you do that. And we all think our and shit think, matters, wow, but in the grand scheme, it doesn't. create you? I mean, a if you're going, mind. you're going... Who do we get now for Bobby's brother? Mm -hmm. Oh, we need an idiot. Okay. <laughs> yeah. How about this guy? How about we this guy? We'll give him a name. Sleeves. That's good. Put in <laughs> sleeves. What's he do? Uh, not much. He just goes around. He bullshits with everybody. And uh, yeah. okay, good, good, good. Put him on the deal. And he exists now. He exists. And then he comes up. Damn. And what do you got? Two girls now, right? Oh, yeah. And he's come up with two. So he's going to put them in the program. And they're all simulations. And we go. Now, these guys, these guys that are billion times smarter than me all believe this. And I'm, I'm going, what am I missing? Because I'm lost here. I'm really lost. Anyway, you asked me the question. I'm so I did lost. that for four hours today. Which, four hours. In the grand scheme of things, live, PJ Tour, all that stuff. It's not, we're not even a it blip doesn't matter. on the radar doesn't, of existence. We're talking about Doppler shifts from red to blue, whether we're expansion in the universe, how it started, Big Bang. How does a pin needle start all of this? What? What? I think everything's wrong. This is why I talk about golf. Colt, Every, Colt every your thoughts. Everything is wrong. Elaborate. It's all wrong. Don't believe it. it's all wrong. It's either AI or it's CG. We're all being fooled. I don't know what's real. You might not be real. You might not be real. Well, I know, I know you're not, not real. <laughs> <laughs> we know you're not real. <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll toast you to that, yeah. boys. Yeah. Well, I Here's to you. The I such saying, glasses. It's, I it's a perfect always good way to see it. you guys. Always, always good to see you guys. It's a pleasure to have you in here, Dad. You're one of the true greats, and we appreciate your time. We'll get you back in April after you can get the golf course on the conditions that you want, and we'll yeah. see if you shoot your age. I can How shoot. about let's do that? We go out and it's film 75. that, and it'll, it'll be the bet. Well, maybe we'll get sides. Will McCord shoot his age or not? You'll be In April, will you be 76 yet? Uh, one more month. All right. Man. We'll just pretend you're 70. So we'll okay. just tell them your Good birthday's in April again, 1st. Yeah. Again. It's not real anyways. We're pretending everywhere, right? Birthday's made up. It's your creation yeah. date. You weren't even born. Uh, let me created. put you on the spot real quick before we end this, because Tiger teed it up this week at the Hero Challenge. Yeah. Started today. It's pretty crazy that what all he's gone through. Will Tiger Woods win again? One last golf question. In I cannot answer that with no. Cannot. Watch him what he did. In his career, I cannot answer no. Yes, I think he can win again. We're filming this on day one of the hero. Yes. His opening tee shot today, 20 of the best players in the yeah. world, was the longest of the group. Seed. The dude's for, about to be 48 Dude. years old. Dude. He, yeah. Looks like J.J. Watt's upper body. He walked out body. there like that and went, yeah. holy crap. Yeah. What Home is he been lifting doing some now? Curls. Yeah. The legs well, he, were laid up. But the upper body was not he neglected. Knows, yeah, he he knows looks like you. This doesn't work anymore because he used to get out in front with his lower body. Yeah. yeah I think it's it. honestly maybe help. an asset for his driver There's because no the lower body doesn't outrace you at all. You can go back and look in my broadcast. I'm saying... 25 years ago, I'm talking to somebody, maybe Ferret or something, they asked me that question about his golf swing. I said, right now, there's there's too much difference between his lower body speed and his upper body catching up, and that's going to hurt him. Sooner or later, his back is going to go, and as soon as his back is going, he's going to get better because then it's got to go in unison because the human body can't take, I've done it, can't take you going zip with the lower and uh, the follow. That separation, that X factor, if you want to call it, is going to break you. Age will break you doing that. And with the accents he's had and everything else, now I'm telling you what, that swing looks good. If he could still get it out there 305, 10 yards average, oh, God. oh my God, game, the yeah. way his iron and game is. If, and, part, and if it's straight if over he can and over, walk, that's yeah, the deal. That's the issue. I was amazed that operation where they fused his right ankle to his heel and he is walking and he's got no differentiation of pulling that and the right hip up and doing it. he's walking perfect yes there's he's, no question he's he can real. do it it's well, a simulation the anyways man what do you think the they're going to do with a broken leg yeah. that's all you got to that's all you got to say him in the simulator 
They were in a good mood. Yeah, we got fucked on that deal. Uh, <laughs> we didn't get the same guy. <laughs> like, Come on, guys. We didn't get the same engineer. Open it up a little bit. Yeah, yeah exactly. All right, Magic, as always, thank you, sir. All right, guys. We love All you. Right. All right, over and out. All right, well, that was the one, the only, Gary McCord joining us on Subpar. I mean, what an absolute beauty. What was the question again? I love him. I love him to death, dude. <laughs> like he's, I call him dad, jokingly, but like he is a special dude. This is the one thing I've liked about Gary. And if you don't know him like personally, closely, you might not see it. You might just think what you see is what you get. But like you and I can attest to the fact like Gary McCord is a very smart guy. His, his brain is all over the fucking map. You don't say. But he's very smart. But he like when he was on television doing the broadcasting, like he'd rather play like the dummy, the idiot. Oh, I don't know. I'm just a goofball type of deal. When in reality, like there's a lot of moving parts in there. And he and he knows a lot on, on a wide variety of topics. But you sit down and talk with him, dude. You can have your little notes set out, whatever you want to. It's... There ain't no guarantee you're getting to any of it. And the story about me going in the booth with him the first time when I was still playing is slightly fabricated. We don't have to get into it, but there's there was definitely um, some exaggerations That's in there. That's not like Gary. Not to, at all to exaggerate a story at all. I think typically he's what the best, he says man. exactly. In my opinion, TV misses him. I mean, I know he's older. He's 75 years old now. Claims he still breaks his age. Bullshit. But. I don't care. Yeah, only 75. in April. Wasn't it only in April? Yeah. When he's, yeah. But he is very sharp, and I think TV misses him, man. He was a character. I would love to be down on the ground right now with CBS and Gary McCord throwing it down to me. I mean, how much fun would we have? Dude, he keeps We'd everything. probably both get fired. keeps everything fun, and that's part of why like, I think he's so successful. He's one of those guys, like, he did it his way, and he was great at it, but like, he doesn't really care. Like, he doesn't. He's not on Twitter. He's not on social media. He could care less about any of that stuff. He's like, I'm going to try to make this fun. Some people are going to like it. Some people might not, but it doesn't like change how he does it. And he's like, they'll tell me, you know, if it's something that needs to be changed. But even doing like the radio with him and Faraday, which was brief because that's when Faraday left and go to live. I was like, man, this is a cool deal. Like these are these are the guys like you put them on the Mount Rushmore's or whatever you want to call it uh, on broadcasting. And we got into it a little bit. I, I was pretty convinced. I think there was a time where he was close to pulling the trigger on that uh, live deal. But any broadcast in the world to this day, right now, tomorrow, be lucky to have Gary McCord. I agree. Um, all right, well, the college football playoffs are set. We have no golf this week. Mm. Um, some pissed off people down there them. in Tallahassee. Uh, Michigan, Washington, Texas, and Alabama, after they beat Georgia in the SEC championship game, are headed to the college football playoffs. We're going to have Michigan versus Bama, Washington versus Texas. Florida State, undefeated in the ACC, win the conference, gets left out. They will be playing Georgia in, what's the bowl called? They will be playing, uh, yeah, I don't know. The I don't give a shit bowl. That's what I was We're both say. pissed to be in here, yeah. bowl. Neither of us care because we both feel like we got pimped. I mean, Florida State. I got a lot of thoughts. Listen, on this. undefeated. They got hosed. I, I get it. Like, if you say who's the better team, Alabama or Florida State right now, probably is Alabama. But Florida State won every game they played. They played some very strong opponents. Then you have Georgia, who has won 29 straight games, back to back national titles. They fall from one to six after losing to Bama. Yeah. I, and they're not getting talked about enough just because of the Florida State thing. Exactly. And it's it's like, dude, this is the problem with this is this the rules change every single year. One year it's most deserving teams and it's the best teams. And it's like, oh, you need to schedule big. We need to see outside of your conference big, you know, schedule a non conference game. Boom, Florida State did that. Hey, you really need to win your conference championship. That's a data point that matters. Oh, we did that too. Oh, you need to go unbeaten. We love to see a zero at the end. Nobody's beaten them. They did it. Granted, I know they lost their quarterback. He's an important player. They are not the same team without him than they are with him. They still but win. Games matter. And if you're just going to change it to like, who do we think is the best right now? Why not go lose your first three games of the season and then late in the year be steamrolling people? What if you lose your quarterback? Well, the same way Florida State lost it at the end. What if he was out the first three games and they went 0-3 and, and then he comes back in and they're winning everything by 40? You think they put him in? No. They're going to leave him out. It's just, I, I'm a, I feel like I'm an okay guy to speak on this because I don't have a dog in this fight. Don't care. I don't have an allegiance to any of these schools that were left out or that are in. And then, like the school that I do have an allegiance to, we've been the Florida State getting left out after you win by 50 and they decide, oh, we're going to conference championships matter. That was the whole thing then, right? We get bumped out. And then I've also been in school like we lost the conference championship game last year and we got in. So I've kind of been on both sides of it. I just think the inconsistency with it sucks if i'm a florida state i'm not saying they don't have the best four teams i'm not saying bama mm -hmm. isn't better than florida state right now they probably are but games matter when i go power five win your conference go unbeaten and schedule a monster non-conference game against lsu that you don't have to do georgia didn't do that they're just waiting for the sec and i don't blame them they don't need to do that but when you do do that and then you go win do -do. you, you got to be rewarded for that yeah when you do do yeah you got to be remorse. You got to get yeah. some shit. I agree. But I think the playoffs are going to be great. But if I'm Florida State, Georgia, you're not too happy with how things ended. But congratulations to all the teams that made it. Um, we're going to give you an NFL pick this week. By the way, our college pick last week, 
I took Washington against the Ducks. You had Mark, the under in the game. Double chicken. Boom. Was that the first time of the year we've double chicken? I don't really remember. Yeah, who cares? Um, we'll I'm going to give you an lot. NFL play this week. Mm, okay. okay. Jacksonville's playing Monday night at – they're playing Monday night at, against the Bengals. So I don't know the result of that game, obviously, yet. But going in, they're 8-3. and three. Next week, they're going to the dog pound. The Cleveland Browns, they're all kinds of banged up. Joe Flacco played quarterback for the Browns today. Jacksonville's good. Like, they're really good, in my opinion. Trevor Lawrence is a stud. They're only giving up three heading up to Cleveland. I know it's a tough place to play, but I like Trevor Lawrence and the Jags. Hard to see the Browns scoring a lot of points with Joe Flacco. I mean, Joe Flacco was good at one point. He's different time, different era, all that. Coming out of doing God knows what and stepping on the field, tough challenge. So I don't hate that at all. I'm kind of picking against another team here. I think it's in the similar situation, and that's the New York Jets. I don't really know what's going on. Like Aaron Rodgers coming back, all that type no. of stuff. Like it doesn't matter. Don't I do think it, they're Aaron. in like full tank mode now? Just like okay, this season got screwed up. Let's just get ready for next year. They don't score, so I'm taking virtually anyone over them. And the Texans were playing real good football right now, still in the wild card hunt, still can make the playoffs. Minus six at New York. Give me them. I think if the Texans get to twelve points, <laughs> they win. They cover. Um, today, your damn Broncos. Oh, fuck. Dude. I lost one game. We had, almost had them. I had the Broncos plus three and a half, and I thought they were going to do it there at the end, and they let me down. That was the situation. I was like, this is the new Broncos. This is what. This is why we brought in a guy that needed to march it down the field, do all God. the things. He was open. Pick. Three picks today. Yeah. Three picks. Well, That's Russ a game got, we should have won. Russ got hit on that last play, but the guy was open. If he had just throwing it a second earlier in the Boom. fourth down play he made a great play on that just those are the games we've been losing historically until the last five or six weeks and none of that matters because the dallas cowboys are playing the philadelphia eagles on sunday night football next week so yeah you guys are starting now we're gonna see Here the next five go. or six ne what next five weeks y'all have like a you play some teams uh, we got the eagles this week then we got buffalo and miami yeah you have some squads so we'll see how it all all stacks up well all right, well, I'm heading down to Cabo for Bros and Joe's. Going to have some more Sincoro tequila, tequila, I'm sure. So hopefully make it back alive. And we'll talk to you on next week's Subpar.